Hey there, I'm Mr. Left Turn, and welcome to my favorite race shop. You know, it's funny. In Season 6, a Rainbow Dash episode halted the streak of Green Flag episodes, and that was also Episode 7 of Season 6. Parental Glidance is in the same boat. Seventh episode of the season, and it's an episode centered around Rainbow. Plus, it also contains something we've been waiting a long time to see, although this time it's Rainbow's parents. Gee, it only took them seven seasons. But, can Parental Glidance pull a 180 on that trend and extend Season 7's streak of Green Flag episodes? Well, to that I say, sit down, Flurry of Emotions. This is our Season Saddle Row review. Parental Glidance was pure fun, even if the opening made me envy the deaf for a brief period. I'll admit, I was skeptical of just what Rainbow's parents would be like, and hoping they wouldn't be the overly concerned and protective type. But sweet Celestia, did they make this a memorable episode. They weren't just helicopter parents, they were attack helicopter parents. But instead of being too overconcerned about Rainbow, they were too overboard with praise and support for her, and it was glorious. Like with Brayburn and Over a Barrel, their high energy and enthusiasm stole the show. But at the same time, it didn't become too much. The ebullience flowed with the episode much smoother than Pinky's did in Rock Solid Friendship. And like with Saddle Row Review, this episode's comedy hit the afterburner, thanks in part to Bo and Wendy's high energetic cheering. Between firing off their own fireworks cannon, which I'm betting they got from the same place Pinky gets her party cannons, accidentally causing Rainbow to cut Spitfire's tail, throwing a torn shirt in the face of a Wonderbolt fan, and forming a pyramid just because Rainbow took a picture, Dash's parents made the second act extremely hard to breathe. And although Scootaloo was a tag grating early on in the episode, she thankfully cooled off quickly and had a lot of great jokes, including going nuts over touring Rainbow's childhood home, putting a new spin on the classic line, you should see your faces by taking a picture of Bo and Wendy and showing it to them, and using the choir sound effect on the door to the Rainbow Dash Mini Museum. Although, I have to ask, where was that sound actually coming from? Stepping away from how fun parental glidance was, the flashback scene, albeit very brief, was perhaps the second most intriguing part of the whole episode. Yes, it showed that Rainbow's parents even praised her for finishing in last, but it was who Rainbow was competing against that piqued my interest. Firstly, at the start of the flashback, Derpy was one of the best flyers of the group as she was the pony with the gold medal on top of the podiums. And notice that her eyes were completely normal, but as time went on and Rainbow got better and better, Derpy not only started to finish worse, but with each passing race, her eyes got more and more crossed until they became what we know today. I'm guessing that during this time she must have gotten into some sort of racing accident or bonked her head on something and her eyes gradually shifted until they were out of alignment. Sweet Celestia, she has a pretty interesting backstory that will unfortunately probably never be told. Well, Season 7 isn't over yet. I also found it interesting that Rainbow actually got to compete against much of the current Wonderbolt lineup at such a young age and eventually outflew them all, so she does have a little history with them on a personal level. But, the character in that flashback that really got me thinking was Lightning Dust. Okay, so now it's confirmed that Rainbow and Lightning have crossed paths before. Nothing too big, right? Well, if you notice, Lightning was on top of the world when she won, but also when Derpy won the first race. And for a while, she was the top dog of that particular group until Rainbow finally claimed a gold medal, and Lightning looked really upset. I understand that after winning for so long, it sucks even more to lose, but what if losing to Rainbow stuck with her for so long that when she found out Rainbow was also a cadet during Wonderbolt's Academy, she intentionally tried to make her look bad or sabotage Rainbow's chances at the Wonderbolts? If she ever comes back, I would love an answer to that. Speaking of all these backstory possibilities, Rainbows gave us some really good development for her character. I was always expecting her parents, or her dad at least, to be those athletic or overachiever types that pushes their kids hard to be a winner and won't accept anything less from them, but I really enjoyed the route they took with Bo and Wendy. And it makes complete sense where Rainbow's attitude of striving hard to be number one and the best at everything came from. The constant cheering and praise made her want to prove that, if her parents were always saying she was, she would be the best at everything, subconsciously at least. I also wonder though, did all that cheering even when she lost help keep her from becoming a sore loser? You know, as in her parents also showed her that it's okay to not win every time, but learn from your loss and keep striving to be the best of the best? However, the most intriguing part of the episode also included development, but for another character. This unfortunately is where the episode gets a little depressing, maybe even dark. Right after Rainbow spins her yarn about her past, Scootaloo says she's never had anyone tell her she would be the best at anything growing up. This can only mean one of two things. It's either more evidence that she's an orphan and has never had parents, or it means she does have parents who are neglectful deadbeats to a possibly disabled child. I mean, that is just tragic to think about. 
And in all honesty, I'd rather take being an orphan and not having parents than having parents who don't love you. Way to sucker punch us in the balls, Hasbro. And of course, the moral was great, though really overshadowed by both Rainbow and Scootaloo's development, but it was still good nonetheless. As we saw with Rainbow and her parents, everyone needs support growing up, whether they're finishing in first or last. Sure, especially if you're an only child, it may feel like your parents are too much, but they just want what's best for you and for you to succeed. Don't take their love and support for granted. Although, I can't really blame Rainbow for snapping at them. She did just bonk her head in her locker, and having parents that overenthusiastic while you're an adult is a little off-putting. But hey, she did learn to embrace her parents' support, and Bo and Wendy still managed to show their love and encouragement even through their heartbroken tears, which left me conflicted on whether to pity them or laugh. I loved her parents, but I would not want them as my parents. However, I do have a few minor nitpicks about the episode, just to stay fair. First off, although it made for a good joke, I didn't like the fact that they used participation stickers during the flashback with Rainbow. And seriously, why were there two medals of silver, bronze, and whatever the hell other color that is? For that matter, why did the podiums extend to seven spots? Most sports don't care about who finishes past third place. Heck, even in NASCAR, you'll really only get recognized if you finish in the top five, so who really cares about sixth and seventh place? Also, Tom Cruise didn't play Rainbow's dad. Talk about a missed opportunity, Hasbro. Anyways, there's not too much else I can say. Parental Glidance had just about everything in it except for romance and adventure. We had drama, comedy, action, perhaps some tragedy, good backstory and development for Rainbow, and even a little development for Scootaloo. The framing device of discovering all this through Scootaloo researching for a report was honestly really clever because we were learning alongside her. The jokes were all nailed perfectly. Bo Hot Hoof and Windy Whistles putting Dale Earnhardt Jr. fans to shame on their cheering was glorious. And this episode actually raises a few questions about some of the ponies Rainbow competed against as a filly, and even about Scootaloo's parentage. Need I say it? Green Flag episode once again, and this episode really gives both Celestial Advice and Rock Solid Friendship a run for their bits on the best episode of Season 7 so far. Or at least of the episodes I've seen. I said it before, but I really feel a little spoiled by all these slice of life stories we've gotten. But, what did you think of Parental Glidance? Post your thoughts down in the comments below and thanks for watching. I'm Mr. Left Turn, I'll see you when I get back from the track.